Right, our next video is about polarization, which is another sort of phenomenon we observe often with light. So let's get stuck in. So we haven't touched on this yet, but basically when you look at what light is, light is actually made out of electric and magnetic fields. So they're oscillating, they're going sort of backwards and forwards. So light is made out of oscillating electric and magnetic fields. And if you could see these electric and magnetic fields, you would see them as being orientated at right angles to each other and also orientated at right angles to what we call the direction of propagation, which is the direction the light wave moves in. So this is kind of an attempt over here to illustrate what a light wave might look like if you could actually see it. So you have this electric field that's going up and down, up and down over here in the vertical direction. And then at 90 degrees to that in the horizontal direction, you have a magnetic field going in and out, in and out, in and out. And then at 90 degrees to both of those, you have this arrow here, which represents the direction of propagation, or in other words, the direction that the light wave as a whole is moving. So when we talk about the polarization of light, we're actually talking about the direction that its, mag its, its electric field points in. So in this case here, the electric field is pointing up and down, so we'd say it's in the vertical direction. So we would say the polarization of this light wave is in the vertical direction. So basically, polarization is just a way of talking about the direction of orientation for a light wave. So here we have two illustrations. First one here shows horizontal polarization. So in this case here, the electric field is going in and out in the horizontal direction. And over here, we have vertical polarization with the electric field going up and down in the vertical direction. And in both cases, the electric field is at 90 degrees to the direction of propagation here. Okay, so why is this important? Well, it turns out that certain kinds of materials will only let light pass through them if they're polarized in a particular direction. And any light that's polarized in the, the wrong direction, in a different direction, will be blocked. So you can use these kinds of materials to create what's called polarizing filters. So a common kind of material that's used for polarizing filters is uh, plastics, like basically PVA plastic that's been sort of heated and stretched so that all of the molecules inside that plastic sort of form like long sort of straight lines. And basically when light hits those long straight lines, it can only pass through them if the light is pointing in the same direction as those molecules. So if the molecules are all orientated in the vertical direction, then the light needs to be polarized in the vertical direction as well if it wants to get through. If, it, if it's not, it'll get blocked. And down here is sort of like an attempt to kind of give like a, a bit of a visual picture of what's happening here. So here we've got a filter. You can imagine that filter as sort of like a hole that light can pass through and that the light waves can only fit through that hole if they're polarized or orientated in the vertical direction. So vertically polarized light will pass through a filter that's vertically polarized. It points in the vertical direction. On the other hand, You've got a vertical filter here and you're trying to pass light that's horizontally polarized. So its electric field is in the horizontal direction. That light wave can't fit through and it'll be blocked. Now, most of the time when you get light, it's not all horizontally polarized or all vertically polarized. It's usually a mixture. In fact, it's light that's polarized in a million different directions. And what will happen in that case is that basically some of the light will get through. Um, but not all of it. So if you've got like randomly polarized light, 50% of that light will be transmitted through the, the, polaroid, the polarizing filter and the other 50% will be blocked. And any light that does pass through that polarizing filter will be sort of forced into being in the same direction as the filter. So if you're passing randomly polarized light through a vertical filter like this, at the other end, you'll get 50% of the original light and all of that 50% will now be polarized in the vertical direction. So they're forced to take the same polarization direction as the filter. Now, if we have two filters, one after the other, if they're both orientated in the same direction, then that's pretty simple. The light can just pass through both. So this picture here represents light composed of two different directions. We've got some light here that's in the vertical direction, represented by this up and down arrow, and some light that's polarized in the horizontal direction, as represented here. 
Now, when that mixture of polarizations meets this filter here, which is obviously in the vertical direction, the vertically polarized light will pass through, the horizontal light will be blocked. Now, if that vertical light then moves on and encounters another a polarizing filter that's in the vertical direction, they'll be able to pass straight through that as well, It'll be quite easy, because it's already in the vertical direction. On the other hand, if you have a vertical filter here that lets free vertically polarized light, and then you have a second filter here that's horizontally polarized, you will have no light getting through both of them, because there's no way that those vertically polarized light waves will be able to get through a horizontally polarized filter. So that's what we call having crossed polarizers. There are Polarizer here, polarizer here. If they're at 90 degrees to each other, then we say that they're crossed. Now, I might try a little experiment here. I'll see if this works. I have here what they're called polarizing sunglasses. We'll talk a bit more about that in a second. Now, each of these lenses in here is a polarizing filter. And if I am now to pop out these lenses, without breaking them, hopefully. There we go, one. And then pop out the other. There we go. Now, if I hold them like this, they're both orientated in the same direction. But if I now turn one of these, so it's at 90 degrees, now that they're crossed filters, if I put them across each other like that, you can see Actually, it's a bit hard to see. Uh, what you should be able to see, if, but unfortunately there's a whole bunch of light reflecting off that, is that basically it turns black once you do that because light that passes through the first filter will not pass through the second because they're at 90 degrees to each other. They're crossed filters. And you can kind of see that. Unfortunately, there's a fair bit of glare coming off my laptop here. Anyway, I'll try it. I'll do that demonstration in class. It's a lot easier when you're face to face to have a look at it. But that's an example of crossed polarizers. Okay, so that brings us to sort of applications of polarization. How can we actually use this sort of phenomenon to do useful things? Well, one of the first things we need to know about polarization is that when you have light reflecting off a smooth surface, you'll end up with the same polarization as the orientation of that surface. So if you have light reflecting off a horizontal surface like the surface of the sea in this picture here, the light that reflects off will turn into horizontally polarized light. Now, if you want to block that, like say a pair of polarizing sunglasses, you use filters that are vertically polarized. So those vertically polarized filters will block a fair bit of that horizontally polarized light. In theory, it should block all of it, but in reality, it's not quite as effective as that. The light that reflects off the water is not completely horizontally polarized. There's also some vertical stuff in there, and that can pass through. But polarizing sunglasses do a very good job of blocking most of the horizontally polarized light you get reflecting off the surface of something like the sea. So that's really good for blocking glare, basically. So if you're out fishing on a boat, and you're getting that horrible glare where you've got the sun reflecting at just the right angle off the water that's going straight into your eyes. Well, that water, that, that light that reflects off the water is going to be horizontally polarized as it reflects. So if you're using polarizing sunglasses with a vertically orientated filters, then that's going to block a whole bunch of that glare and it's going to be, make things a lot easier for your eyes. So polarizing sunglasses are good. They're a lot better than just cheap sunglasses, which are basically just dark plastic. And we, another thing we can use polarizing filters for as well is if, we, if you're a photographer and you're trying to take images of water, because glare coming off the water can um, have a big effect on your photos as well. So over here we have an image, right hand side, no filter, left hand side has a polarizing filter in front of the camera lens. And this polarizing filter is in the vertical direction because as we said before, light that comes off um, the surface of something like water will be horizontally polarized. So this vertical polarizing filter will block most of the glare coming off the horizontal surface of the water. So you can see here, it's quite easy to see into the water. Over here, the glare makes it very hard to do that. So it's a useful application for photography as well. Now, next interesting fact. Um, turns out that 
the blue light in the sky is actually partially polarized. So if you watched um, that extra link I put in the last video, you would have seen that the sky is blue because of blue light is scattered by molecules in the atmosphere. And as that blue light is scattered by molecules in the atmosphere, it also picks up a certain amount of polarization as well. Now, how much polarization it has depends on the angle of the sky that you're looking at compared to the sun. So if you're looking at the sky directly around the sun, there's basically no polarization whatsoever. On the other hand, if you go and you look at an angle of 90 degrees to where the sun is, you're going to have very, very, very strong polarization instead. So that's not a particularly useful fact for human beings, really. But um, many insects have um, cone cells in the back of their, um, their eyes, which are different to what we have in, in mammals. And these cone cells can basically detect polarization. So animal, insects like bees can see the polarization in the sky. They can see that the area of the sky that's at 90 degrees to the sun is strongly polarized. And they can use that to navigate. So the bees can tell where, where the sun is, even on a cloudy day, because they can see that polarization in the air. And they use that to navigate from their hives to where they're getting the nectar from and then getting back again. And okay, another one. Um, turns out that certain materials like plastic actually rotate the polarization of light as the light passes through them. Um, certain solutions do as well. For instance, uh, sugar dissolved into water also rotates the polarization of any light you pass through it as well. Now, the reason why this is useful is you can use this to do stress analysis on plastics. So stress analysis basically means looking for um, the points in a, a plastic material where there's the most stress, where it's being forced the hardest. Um, and the way it works is you take a material that you want to test, a piece of plastic, and you place it between two cross polarizers. Now, as we talked about before, Normally, cross polarizers won't let any light through whatsoever. Any light that passes through the first polarizer is blocked by the second. But if you put a piece of plastic in between, that piece of plastic will rotate the light slightly as it passes through the plastic, which means that when it gets to the second filter, it's no longer at 90 degrees to that second filter. So a little bit of that light can actually pass through. And what you end up with is a pattern like this, because not only does a little bit of light get passed through because of what the plastic does to its polarization, it also depends on what exact color of light is as well. It won't happen for all colors equally. Some colors will be rotated more than others as they pass through the plastic. So what you end up with is this nice little multicolored image here. And you can see in this multicolored image that there are certain points where there seems to be areas of higher stress. Um, People who work in this area can actually interpret these photos a lot better than I can. But you can see here, there appears to be an area there where you've got high stress for some sort of reason. You can see those little bands. Now, um, an interesting thing to do, I tried this out, it's pretty pimp. Do a Google search for this exact phrase here I've highlighted in bold. And the very first YouTube video that comes up shows you how you can basically do this using a, an LCD monitor like you have on your computer or TV at home, and a pair of polarizing sunglasses if you have them. It's very, very, very cool. Okay, uh, next one. Now, modern 3D glasses. I'm not talking like the old ones where you had a red lens in one eye and a blue lens in the other. Modern 3D glasses use polarization to produce 3D images. So in a 3D film, you have two projectors. One is for the left eye and one is for the right, and each one uses a different kind of polarized light. The first projector shines the image for the right eye using one kind of polarized light. The second one shines the image for the left eye using the other kind of polarized light. And basically, the polarized light that was attended for the left eye can pass through the left lens of your 3D glass, but can't pass through the right, whereas the light that was intended for the right eye can pass through the right lens, but can't pass through the left. So that's how you separate those two images, and it's a lot better than having to watch a red and blue film like the old 3D days. Okay, next one. Uh, this is really interesting, liquid crystal displays like you have on calculators or modern flat screen monitors, but unfortunately too complex to go into here. So we'll skip that, read up on that if you want to, it's quite interesting. And I'm gonna sign off because I'm about to run out of time here. 
But our next video will be on lenses and imaging.